Hello, 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 YouTube. How's it going? You guys ready for another full-on review? Well, today we got Viltrox in the house. All you APSC users out there, ZFC owners, Z50 owners, this is your video. Today we'll be reviewing Viltrox 33mm 1.4Z lens, autofocus lens. Also, the 56 prime lens, AF 1.4Z lens. The emergence of the ZFC and the Z50, this is a welcome video. Are these lenses good enough for all you Nikon shooters to buy, to mount, and to use? Well, we're going to find out in this video. Sample images, video clips, the whole gamut. You guys ready? Let's rock and roll. What's good, guys? This is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. This is my official review of the Viltrox Z APS-C, the 56mm 1.4Z lens, and the 33mm 1.4Z. Now, with the emergence of the Nikon ZFC, Nikon should make more lenses for the APS-C system. They have a kick butt camera. ZFC Z50, they do not have quite enough lenses out yet. Fun fact, guys, Nikon does not have a prime lens for that system yet. So kudos to Viltrox for stepping up and delivering the goods here. A lot of people are buying these ZFC cameras, Z50s. They need lenses. They want lenses. Why choose an APS-C system? Well, a lot of shooters out there like the fact that it's lighter, smaller, more compact, and of course, cheaper to own. Given those facts, you know, there'll be a lot of Nikon ZFC shooters, Nikon Z50 shooters. So we just need the glass to go along with it. So I'm predicting that if Viltrox steps up and makes really good glass for the system, then, you know, we got yourself winners here. However, we don't know that yet. I haven't tested these lenses out yet. Let's just see if they're good enough for all you Nikon ZFC and Z50 owners out there. That's the whole goal of this review is to show you guys what these prime lenses can do. Again, this is my first time using these lenses and I'm pretty excited. Oh, and by the way, Viltrox does make these lenses for the Fuji mount as well. I would love to review those Fuji lenses as well. So send me those when you can and by the way viltrox i really like what you're doing with those red lenses uh the fuji film red lenses you got coming out special edition but there's gonna only gonna be like 400 sets made those lenses look really cool viltrox all right guys so get, let's get started let's start rocking this review well hello there what can this be viltrox sent me a lens to review shall we do the unboxing all right unboxing the viltrox aps-c af 56 1.4 z lens viltrox did a good job with the packaging material warranty card instruction manual even has a pouch the 33 millimeter is packaged the same exact way no need to show you the unboxing of that one here's a hood there's the lens. Well, it feels really nice from my initial impression here, holding this lens for the first time. Very nicely constructed body. It's time for technical specifications for the Viltrox Prime lenses. I'll be posting them up on the screen for you to check out. Fujifilm has been rocking the APS-C mirrorless market for a while now. So it only makes sense if Nikon comes out with an APS-C mirrorless camera of their own, it only makes sense to have these prime lenses available for users. I know Fuji, I've been using this system for a while now and they have some awesome prime lenses available for use. How good are these Viltrox lenses? I've mentioned before that the Viltrox makes 
Fuji XF lenses as well. To make a lens for the Z-mount APS-C system, this is new territory for Viltrox and Nikon as well. How good will these lenses be? Let's find out in this video. Now some of you photographers out there might be against using third-party lenses and just stick with the Nikon or Canon camera brand that you have, Sony or whatnot. However, like I stated in the past, Nikon to this date does not make prime lenses for APS-C Z-mount cameras. So what do we do? You don't use third-party lenses? Do you just stick with the kit lens 16 to 50 or the other APS-C lenses? There's not that many APS-C autofocus Z-mount lenses to choose from. So hopefully this review will help you guys out and help you decide. So I have the 56 1.4Z in my hand with the Z50. It actually feels really good and compact. This is a 56Z mount APS-C lens. It feels really solid and I'm surprised that these lenses, they feel really nice. When you focus, it's very smooth. When you manually focus, it's got a built-in aperture ring that feels really nice in the hand. When you, when you change the dials on the aperture ring, it's very, very nice and smooth. It's got an A dial on the aperture ring here, just in case you wanna, you know, punch in your aperture value in camera. And also the lens hood is built very, very nicely. It works really well putting it on and off on this lens and very happy so far with the handling of this 56 millimeter lens. Look, this is the Z50 with the 56. So why do you think people choose APS-C and not go full frame? Well, I touched on this in the beginning of this video and let's talk about it. I really feel that it has to do with the size, the weight, and you know, easy to carry around. And also, number one reason why APS-C, delivering great quality and not too expensive of a price. I mean, these bodies, the Z50, the ZFC, they look really cool, but they're a fraction of the price of what full frame costs. Obviously, there's a lot more you know, lenses to choose from when you go full frame, but Viltrox is doing it right. Viltrox is giving us users options for the APS-C. Like I said, now with the ZFC rocking and rolling and Fuji has been rocking the APS-C market for God knows how long with the X-T3, the X-H1, the X-Pro1, 2, 3, you name it, Fuji's doing its thing. But don't sleep on Nikon when it comes to APS-C, guys. And Viltrox is not sleeping and that's why they're making lenses for the Nikon system. So APS-C users rejoice. The 56 1.4Z APS-C lens registers at around $329 US and the uh, 33Z APS-C lens goes for about 279 US. So $279 and $329 for this guy right here. Viltrox did a really good job cosmetically with these lenses. The 56 takes a filter of a 52 millimeter size right in front here. So as far as cosmetically, Viltrox, you're doing a great job, but let's see what this lens can do. We don't buy these lenses to look at them and to you know feel good about that. We buy them to take pictures and videos. So why don't we get started with the sample images? Maybe I'll shoot my car or if I see anybody interesting, take a few portraits with the 56 and the 33. I have my Fujifilm X-H1 and I brought me a 35 millimeter lens with the right adapter. I just wanted a side-by-side -side comparison shooting the same thing. And that's the only APS-C camera that I own other than this guy, the Z50. So I said, why not? Let's give it a shot. So I brought the Fuji and I also brought with me the DX Nikon 16 to 50 kit lens. I was just curious to shoot this lens side by side with the Viltrox. Let's roll with the sample images now. Take a look at your screen. On the left, you will see the lens I'm using. The DSC means I'm using a Z50 camera. On the right, the DSCF means I'm using the Fujifilm uh, X-H1 camera lens info on the screen. So in this review, I'll be using multiple combinations of cameras and lenses just to spice it up a bit. So I'm a little limited to sh what I can show you, but I'll try my best. By the way, all these images are unedited, raw files in Lightroom. 
straight from a Lightroom software, so you could see that. Let's zoom into the first image, 33 Viltrox on the left, wide open. On the right, we're using the Fuji X-H1 with the 35G 1.4 Nikon lens, again, wide open. Now you may be asking why even bring in the Fuji, this and that. That's the only camera I had to compare with, an interchangeable APS-C camera, and I thought it'd be interesting, you know, Fuji, Nikon, APS-C, mirrorless, so why not, right? And to make it fun, why not, right? Let's make this fun and informative for all you viewers out there that are interested in photography and these lenses. But I will stick to highlighting the Viltroxes because this is a Viltrox review. So on the, in the screen here, on the right, we have the kit lens, the Nikon DX kit lens shot at around 35 to 36 millimeters. Let's compare it to the Viltrox on the left. Now the DX Nikon lens is a variable aperture lens. So when you're at 35 millimeters, you're shooting at f5, f5.3. So I had to kind of match it with what's going on with the Viltrox at 5.0 here. So you can see the differences in the sample images. On the Fuji, I'm using an adapter to mount the G lens. And it doesn't tell me the aperture, but I can pretty much guess what stops. So on the Fuji, I'm getting a little bit of CA, chromatic aberration, purple, fringy stuff. Let me know in the comments section why this is. That G lens, that I'm using a 35G 1.4 lens. That lens is supposed to be an amazing lens, pretty expensive lens, I might add. But I'm getting a lot of that purple fringing with the Fuji 35G adapted to that camera. Now that lens is 10 to 15 years old. So it's not a modern, modern lens. It's not an old gem, but it's not a modern lens. So they pretty much corrected all that stuff with modern glass. If you're wondering where the lens info is on the Fuji on the right, well, I'm using an adapter that doesn't carry over lens info that. So that's why you don't see which aperture I'm shooting with or anything like that. You only see the shutter speed and the ISO of the camera. Okay, so back to the Viltrox, the Viltrox 33. Now in this next image, I wanted to shoot a wide shot of the park and the bench. Let's zoom into the bench here. The Viltrox is set to almost wide open. So is the G lens here. In this next sample image, let's go ahead and zoom in 100% crop to the little sign of the tree, as you see. And the Viltrox 33 at 1.4 wide open and the G lens also wide open. Now take a look at this images. This image is both shot at 5.6 on the Viltrox and 5.6 on the DX Nikon lens, the DX 16 to 50 Nikon lens. Zoom into the tree and the details. What do you see here? Do you like the performance of the 16 to 50? How does it compare to the Viltrox? I noticed that the Viltrox 33 is not super sharp, wide open. Now that's to be expected somewhat. And if you know me, I always say that sharpness is not everything in photography. But for the price you're paying with these APS-C lenses, in my opinion, in my professional opinion, these are really good results. Again, the price you're paying. And for what it is, a PSC sensor, these are really exceptional results. Now, the 16 to 50 kit lens Nikon. I'm so happy that I brought this to this review. I just want to see what this lens can do. This lens is sharp, and yeah, it is a variable aperture lens, but it, it does its job for a kit lens. I'm really loving those Fuji colors on the right. That Fuji raw file, those deep greens. Look at how the Viltrox is performing. Look at that sharpness wide open here. And on the right, you got the Fuji. Look at the sharpness on the left. This is very good results at 100% crop, guys. Again, for reference, the Viltrox are mounted on a Nikon Z50. So is the 16 to 50 Nikon kit lens. The Fuji is using the 35 with an adapter Nikon G lens. The Bokeh is satisfactory with both examples. Let me zoom in here and I want you to pay attention to that area right there. The sharpness is very pleasing to the eye with both examples here. 
The colors are nice. The background blur is nice. You see the little, is that a golfer in the back? Now ah, the park bench. Who doesn't love park bench pictures? Now, this is at about 11 a.m. in the morning with the sun directly above us. And let me add this. With full frame, it's a different story. It's going to cost you a lot more money to acquire prime Nikon Z lenses. However, with the APS-C cameras, our options are limited. Number one, these Viltrox lenses are not going to cost you a lot of money to own. And number two, we don't have options out there for Nikon. So this is a win-win situation all around. And do I think these results are good? Yes, they are good. They're great. They're not exceptional. They're good. Good enough. Now, okay, this gentleman was an interesting fellow. <laughs> we got to talking. He likes photography. And, uh, you know, we talked about photography and all that good stuff. Okay, finally, some 56 millimeter samples. Okay, take a look at the sharpness wide open with the 56 Viltrox lens. Now look at that sharpness at 100% crop. On the left, we have the Viltrox 33. On the right, we have the 56 Viltrox. Both Viltrox wide open, different focal lengths, both sharp. You know, I love shooting people. When you shoot people, you mean, I mean, photograph people. I'm more of a portrait photographer than a landscape shooter. So I can be a better judge of a lens when I look at portraits of people. But just look at that sharpness. Look at the Viltrox 56 when stopped down just a little bit at 2.5. Exceptional results. In my opinion, this is 1K to 2K lens results I'm getting with this combo here. Z50 and a Viltrox that cost a few hundred dollars. Now with this, I'm using the DX Nikon kit lens. And on the left, we got the 56 at 2.5 and the kit lens is at 5.6. That, that kit lens is built to be a sharp lens all around. And you could just tell with that result, the Viltrox, again, not far behind. Look at the detail around the eyes of the gentleman here enjoying a park setting and on this next set we have the 33 viltrox on the left and the kit lens on the right at 35 millimeters so you can pretty much tell same cropping same composition what both lenses are doing and we got both samples shooting it at 5.6 aperture so get it as close to possible to compare I always look at sample images as a tool, a tool to tell me if this lens would do good for my use case. And this is what I'm trying to achieve with these sample images. Now again, when you're doing sample images out and about, it's not 100% perfect, especially if you're comparing it with another lens, another camera brand, and obviously an adapter. So that's a big deal here. I can't help but noticing a lot of purple fringing on the image on the right, which is the Fuji adapted a 35G lens. A lot of CA here. This can be corrected in post. However, the detail is nice. The background blur on both images are nice. The Viltrox is holding its own. Nice detail. You're talking about a lens on the right that's $1,500. You're talking about a lens on the left that's $270. <laughs> And we all know that counts for something these days. Saving a little bit of money, in this case a lot of money, and get similar results is the whole goal, <laughs> you know, in buying lenses sometimes. But look at this result here. You know, I had a commenter the other day say, Viltrox, what's Viltrox? This is Viltrox. The image on the left, delivering exceptional results. This is Viltrox. Good job, Viltrox. Look at the detail on the door. Thank you for sending me these lenses to review. The packaging, the box of these Viltrox lenses are quite nice. This reminds me of back in the day when I used to buy Zeiss Battis lenses. The box and all the quality, very nice. Well, it's not a Vahography review without video clips. So, it's time to mount these Viltrox lenses onto a Z50 and see what they can produce. Let's rock and roll. Mm -hmm. The 56 1.4, shooting it at 1.4, wide open, the Viltrox 56 APS-C 1.4Z lens. How's the bokeh? How's the background blur? Is it acceptable? Does it look nice? Remember guys, this is the 
Viltrox lens. Viltrox makes prime lenses for your APS-C Z cameras, ZFC owners, Z50 owners. Prime lenses for your APS-C cameras. 1-4, $329 retail, the 56 one four. Is it worth it? The whole point of this review is for you guys to be the judge of that. Is it worth it? If you're doing video, if you're doing photography, and if you want something that auto-focuses. Auto-focuses. So let's see how well it auto-focuses. I'm probably in focus right about this distance, about a foot and a half away from the front element. Foot and a half away from the front element, the 56. You guys know the 56 is an 85 millimeter equivalent on a full frame. So yeah, 85 millimeter field of view here on a 56 APS-C lens. One point four. This is why you're buying this lens, right? Video clips at one point four with the thirty three one four Z. Now let's see how well these Viltrox lenses do autofocus tracking. I have eye autofocus on on the Z fifty. Walking up to the camera. This is the fifty six millimeter one point four wide open. The fifty six millimeter one four. It's doing a decent job tracking me with the autofocus, with eye autofocus. Now let's do it again. I'm gonna walk up to the camera a little faster now and let's see what we see. And the third time around with the 56 millimeter, just a little faster. So I want to see how it tracks. Okay, now let's mount the 33 millimeter on and let's do the same test. Focus tracking, I auto focus on, on a Z50. I wanted to also see how this 33 millimeter APS-C lens close focuses. A couple of videos ago, I did do a full-on review of the full-frame Viltrox 35mm lens. And that observation, the Nikon Z 35mm close focus is a lot better than the Viltrox full-frame. This APS-C 33mm focuses distance is about the same as the full-frame 35 Viltrox. And finally, a focus tracking test that's a little faster paced. Hopefully you enjoy these experiments, guys. All right, this fellow at the park, I happened to talk to him, asked him politely if I could take his picture. He asked me what I'm doing. I asked, you know, I told him lens reviews. So here's some video clips with these lenses. This is the 35 Vil the 33 Viltrox lens. And here you go with the 56 millimeter Viltrox wide open at 1.4 doing video clips. What a nice gentleman. He was talking to me about the cameras that he owns. We had a nice little discussion. What do you guys think of the background blur here? Look at the sharpness. I'm very impressed doing video clips with the Viltrox, guys. Great option. Okay, so I did have the Fuji, and remember that 35G with an adapter. These are clips with the Fuji X-H1, 4K at 30 frames per second. And I just wanted to compare and contrast the two cameras and lenses. What are you gonna do? Two at once or something? Yeah, just like. You can do that? Yeah. Quick note about the clips you just watched the 35G with the Fuji, that's a manual focus setup, so it was kind of challenging. Let me, let me ask you a question. I'm a big history guy. Yeah. Me what, too. When was the big, when was the best decade you lived? I lived? Oh, yeah. What do you think oh, the I don't best know. decade? That's, that, now, that's hard to say because. Um, they, perhaps they all have uh, qualities, you know, that are good and interesting. You like the fifties? Yeah, the fifties, uh, hot rod years. Yeah. Uh, After that, we got into politics, and I don't want to air politics on this channel. So, 
I cut it short. My conclusions of the Viltrox 5614 APS-C and the 3314. Let me start with the good points because there's a lot of them. Build quality is exceptional. The way it feels in the hand, the focus ring, the aperture ring all feel smooth. And for the price you're paying, it's sharp. In my opinion, it's sharp enough. The background blur and bokeh from these Viltrox lenses for an APS-C camera and lens, it will do the job. You will be very, very pleased. The hood, the caps are all made of good quality. If there was one thing that I did not like about this lens is that wide open, it is not as sharp as the Nikon Z lenses. Now, again, APS-C and the fact that these Nikon Z lenses are amazingly sharp, the Nikon native Z glass. So given that fact, it does a really good job for what it is. And again, the price, you cannot go wrong. So if you would ask me if I recommend this lens, yes, I do. Viltrox, you're hitting it out of the park with these Prime APS-C offerings. Good job. So were you impressed? Were you not so impressed? Let me know in the comments below what you think of these Viltrox Prime lenses. They're not too expensive and this might be a good option for you guys. Nikon does not have an APS-C equivalent option for Prime lenses. So who knows, this might work for you guys. So if this is your first time on this channel, Vahography, go ahead and like and subscribe. All right guys, this is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. Keep on rocking those cameras and lenses.